Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part four of my Kerbaly Space Program tutorial series. Today, we're going to try to land on the Mun. There's been some small changes to my field over here, don't worry, it's just me updating to a new version of the mods and a few other things like that. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to use this exact same craft here. We're not going to change him in any way. We're just going to add a few things so that he is capable of successfully landing on the moon. Now, we're going to need a little bit of electricity here, so I'm going to put on some charge packs. We're going to add four of those. We're also going to put four of the OXSTAT photovoltaic panels. They're the basic photovoltaic, photovoltaic panels. They don't require you to deploy them. They just kind of hang out on the side of the craft, and if they're getting sunlight, we'll provide you with a little bit of electric charge. We don't need a lot of electric charge, so this will be perfect for our purposes. Now, we're going to want to add some landing gear. There are two kinds... There's three kinds of landing gear you can add, actually. But the LT-5 micro landing strut is really only good for when you're using the uh, Stay Putnik, the Probodyne uh, QBE, and the OKTO automated systems because that's the only way you can make something light enough that it's not going to break these toothpick landing legs. And then uh, the next step up is the LT-100 st struts, which are the ones we're going to use. We're going to put four of them here on the side. They weigh 0 0.05, impact tolerance of 12, and they're just basically a leg that can be lowered. The next one up from that is the LT-2. It's 0.1 weight, but it is also significantly larger and longer. It, it can actually go down a lot farther and therefore can support more weight. Uh, the last thing that we want to put on here is some lights. Now we're going to want to do the Illuminator Mark IIs. I'm going to put two of those on here. And then we're going to put the other ones on here as well, just as soon as I get these shook on. We want two, not four. All right. And then we're going to do two of the Illuminator Mark Ones, And we're going to put them over here. Okay, now the illuminators come in very, very handy when you're docking or when you're trying to land on something because they'll light up the ground for you. And especially if you're working on the dark side of the planet, it can be very difficult to see what's going on. Now, we're also going to dive right into the action groups here because we can. And what we're going to want to do is click on action groups up at the top. Now, these are all just mapped to the 1, 2, 3, 4 through 0 keys on your keyboard. So we're going to select custom one here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these illuminators here. And I'm going to put toggle light under custom one. Now I'm going to select the, and you'll notice how it selected both of the illuminators here. So it does actually uh, use symmetry to determine what it should be selecting. And now I'm going to select these other lights. And I'm also going to add them to the toggle light. So now whenever I push the one key, those lights are going to toggle on or off very very useful you can do this for a lot of things like with these engines here this central engine you can actually toggle the gimbal you can toggle the activation of the engine you can set specific buttons to just shut down or activate the engines uh, engine like this engine doesn't have a gimbal on it so it doesn't have the gimbal option the jettison Jettison is only for if you have a decoupler underneath it, and you can put decouplers underneath these engines. What will happen is the first thing it will do is it will decouple the node, and it will send off its thing, but it will keep its shroud. You can then choose to jettison the shroud at any time by setting this button. It's an interesting feature. All right, and that should actually do it for our craft. Let's go ahead and save it and put it on the launch pad so we can show off what we're actually going to be doing here. Let's just show off these lights. Hmm? Yeah. All right, so get the game loaded up. There we go. I'm going to open the resources here so we can see what we're doing with the electric charge. Now, if I push the one key, as you can see, all of the illuminators come on just fine. Right now, the only ones that are actually hitting the ground are the Illuminator Mark 1s. And the Illuminator Mark 1s have a significantly longer range than the Mark 2s. But that will give you kind of a, a distance judge to help you to figure out how high off of the ground you are and help you to not crash. Now, it looks like that we are actually receiving enough sunlight to maintain battery level with all four of these lights gone. They don't exactly consume a lot of power. But we're now going to just turn them off because we don't need them yet. And I'm going to get into a stable orbit around Kerbin, and then we shall return. 
Okay, and welcome back. We are now in a stable orbit with approximately half of this fuel tank still full. No, wait. Quarter. You're not drawing off of this, are you? No. Giving me funny values here. So we've got a little bit of fuel left in the FTL T800 fuel tank, but that should be more than what we actually need here. So now we're going to try to get out to the MUN. In order to do that, we're going to need a maneuver node. So we want to click anywhere on our orbit here to create a maneuver and just add it there. And it's going to give you six directions that you can thrust in based upon the orientation of your craft. We've got the prograde, the retrograde, and then towards the planet, away from the planet, towards the south pole, and then towards the north pole. Uh, at least that's what it gives me when I'm orbiting around a planet. So we're going to hit the accelerator here. We want to get this thing all the way out until it's approaching the orbit of the Mun. Don't really care where, we just want it to be out there far enough that it's going to touch the Mun's orbit. All right, now if I put my mouse over the middle of the circle here, I can grab a hold of it, and you'll know when you're gonna grab a hold of it because it'll light up. I'll change the angle here so I can actually get it. There we go. And now I can drag it around. All right, so if we zoom back out here, I can drag it around the orbit, and unfortunately, it looks like I don't have enough acceleration for this particular part of the orbit. That can change based on where you're at. So we're going to get out there. Try that again. There we go. And grab it and start moving it around. Oh, and it looks like we can catch the MUN somewhere over here. There's a lot of different ways you can catch the MUN, but my preferred method is to catch it at the very tip of the orbit here, which is going to be right about here. That way we're traveling as slowly as possible when we encounter the MUN, and therefore we need the least amount of delta V possible in order to land. So that's about as good as it's going to get, and you, you can see how it's almost curved back around so that it's going to start sending us back towards the planet, but instead it encounters the MUN, gets sucked up towards the MUN a little bit before escaping it, but we're going to do a little bit of our own Delta V in order to instead land upon it. Now that we have the maneuver node, we're going to go back to our craft here, and you'll notice a few things over on the right-hand side that are new. Now, you, the estimated burn time, the node time in T-10 minutes and 57 seconds, as well as the amount of delta V that we need to apply to the craft. The first thing we need to do is we need to find the direction we're actually going to burn here. Now, it's a little blue marker, not very easy to miss. There he is. And we're just going to line up the craft, point right at it, lock it in, and then we need to get ready to head towards our node. So there he is. Come on. A little bit slow here because it's, it's still a bigger craft-ish for only manipulating it around with a single SAS. Okay, so now we've got our positioning correct. We've got the SAS engaged. Now, uh, as long as you have at least burned your engine even slightly, even if it was just a 1% burn for just a second, that's all that the game needs in order to properly calculate your estimated burn time at maximum thrust. Now, we've already used the majority of the fuel in this stage, so it knows exactly how much estimated burn time I currently have with this stage enabled. Now, that's not to say that we're going to actually be able to do it with this stage. It's just that's how much you would have to burn for in order to do it with this stage. But we may not have enough fuel to burn for a total of 28 seconds. We'll find out. So what we need to do is we need to get to the node, and we need to figure out when we're going to have to start burning. To do that, you take your estimated burn time, which in this case is 28 seconds, and divide it in half. So that's 14 seconds. Now what that means is we want to start the burn at exactly 14 seconds to the node because, well, what we ideally would want is 834.3 meters a second of delta V applied to the craft at the node. I don't know about you, but I can't snap my fingers and instantly cause it to do that. So we're going to have to just do our best to line it up with the node as best we can. So let's time warp here to get over to the node. We're looking for about 14 seconds to begin our burn. Four minutes, three minutes, two, one. All right, gonna slow down the time warp here. 20, 16, 15, 14, and that's the node. 
begin burning. You can see that the delta V begins to reduce. Now I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch that little blue marker like a hawk because I need to stay on that little blue marker as much as possible. Okay, so we have run out of engine in that, we're run out of fuel in that stage, so we need to get rid of him and we need to start burning our other stage. He's going to take a little bit longer to apply the same amount of delta V here, but he can still get us the amount of delta V we need in a reasonable amount of time. Now the blue node is trying to get away from me here. I'm going to hit caps lock and put on the uh, fine controls. We're going to reduce our burn here to about a third so we can better fall around the little blue thing. We want to hit as close to 0.0, .0 meters a second as possible. And only rarely have I ever actually managed to pull that. I usually get closer to 0.1 or 0.3. And this this case, I was so busy talking to you guys, I didn't quite hit it exactly. So I'm actually going to rotate around a little bit because the little blue guy is still here. He's just on the other side because you burnt for too long. So we're going to actually get on him again. This is a little bit easier to do with RCS because you can RCS applies very little force. And ah, there we go, 0, 0.0, perfect. So that's exactly what we wanted. Push the map key again, come out here, click on the maneuver node and get rid of it so we don't have all the extra things running around. And as you can clearly see, it looks like we did exactly what we wanted to do. The mud's going to catch us and release us if we don't perform any actions, but obviously we're going to perform actions. And we've got about, mm, two-thirds of our fuel left. Not too shabby. So let's accelerate time and get out to the Mun so that we can begin our maneuvers to land upon it. And for a tutorial series, there's a lot of space junk flying around that planet. Moving on. All right, come on, Mr. Mun. I want you to grab us here. Right there. All right, so the Mun has grabbed a hold of us. And I'm going to begin doing my burning maneuvers here because the farther we are away from the Mun, the slower we're traveling. Right now we're going about 327 meters a second, but we actually want to approach the Mun as quickly as possible right now. We're not trying to slow down or anything. So I am going to actually kill off my directional velocity rather than simply trying to slow down. So if I come over here to the equator right there, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line up on the equator being exactly opposite of the retrograde burn and the very top of this bulb, which would indicate going straight towards the planet. And we're going to begin our a little bit of a burn here. And if we watch when the, it actually becomes an orbital burn, it's going to take a second here. You'll notice that by the time we actually come to an orbital burn, we're almost going straight down. All right, so that's fairly close. I stopped it because I was not traveling in the right direction, but that's okay. Now, if I come over here and look at the little marker, you'll notice he's almost going straight on now. So we're almost headed straight at the planet, and that's probably all that we need to do. The only thing we need to worry about now is the fact that we're traveling at 228 meters a second, and we're going to accelerate towards this planet until we actually impact it, because there is no atmosphere on the Mun. And there's a lot of planets out there that they don't have an atmosphere on them, and if you don't count, account for the atmosphere or the lack thereof, you're going to have a bad day. We've got a little bit more than a half a tank of fuel here, so hopefully that should be enough fuel for us to land on the planet. So now we're going to simply fall. That's that's all we're going to do. We're going to fall. I am going to engage the lights here. That's a fairly easy thing to do. You can either push the one key with the action groups, as we talked about earlier, or you can push the lights button. So if I push the one key here and turn all of the lights, I can click the lights button up here, and they will also all come on. The U key, I believe, yes, the U key also toggles the lights as if you were pushing the button up there. So the one key is a little bit unnecessary, but I thought you might want to know about action groups anyway. All right, so that is going to pause the video here until we are closer to the planet, and we will talk about that when we get there. Okay, so we are currently traveling at 140,000 meters, and we've got 570,000 meters a second in our current travel. What we need to do is we need to make sure that we can kill that off, and we can use a maneuver node to actually figure that out. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to create another maneuver node here, if it'll let me. It doesn't seem to want to let me create a new maneuver node. Why can't I make a maneuver node? Oh, it's because it thinks we're going to actually fly out into an orbit around the sun. All right, so we're going to have to actually slow down a little bit here manually before we can figure this out. So that's a little interesting tidbit that I didn't even know myself. So we're going to engage the engines here 
just until this orbit, this Mun escape, instead becomes an orbit. There we go. That's what we wanted. So now, if I put a maneuver node here, so it's a little bit funny. Here we go. Add maneuver. We're going to want to burn like this. And we're just going to burn, 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 burn until we have applied enough delta V that we are basically no longer moving, which is right there. You'll get you see you got five, eight, six point one meters a second. And it looks like it's going to take us about 23 seconds in order to get there. So what we want to make sure is that we have approximately 23 seconds before we impact the planet. Um, that's how long we need to start burning. 23 seconds before we get to the surface, we need to start our burn. So, I don't know about you, but I don't know exactly where that is. So, I'm going to try to manipulate the maneuver nodes again into telling me this information. And it's not wanting to let me put the maneuver node down again. There we go. Alright, so again, we're burning like that till we get to about there. And let's see, that's two minutes away. Oi. Oh, wait, it deleted my node. Add maneuver. Come on. So we want to put a node. You're not You're not going to work with me on this, are you? All right, so let's see. Halfway point, halfway point. Right about there. So about 1 minute and 46 seconds. So I'm going to guess that somewhere down right about, say, there is where we're going to actually want to begin our burn in order to prevent ourselves from crashing into the planet. So there we go, 24 seconds in about two minutes. All right, now don't use this as an actual guide. You can't use that as a guide. That's just something that will help you give, you give you a feel for what it is that you need to do here. So we need about two more minutes here, and we want to begin our burn somewhere around here. So I'm just going to accelerate time a little bit more until I actually get to the point where I want to start burning. All right, so that's it right there. Let us begin our burn here. Full blast on these things, and I'm going to deploy the gear. Now, we may... No, okay. I think we have actually deployed this at approximately the right time. We're burning through the fuel awfully quickly here. I'm not confident that we actually have enough. Uh, it's going to be close. It's going to be very, very close. All right, now I'm going to actually... Uh, oop, it looks like we have plenty. Okay, so we're tr still traveling towards the surface at about 40, but I'm going to come over here and correct my direction of travel a little bit more. I want to drag that guy back over to the middle because I kind of screwed up here and directed him in the wrong way. No big deal. We just want to burn about over here. All right, a little bit more this direction. Oops. Careful. Careful. Oh, dear. Stop. Stop. Stop moving, please. There we go. Okay. Down to the 45. Little bit, little bit. Perfect. Okay, so that looks like it's right about as perfect as it's going to get. Uh, we want to be traveling as straight up and down as possible when we come in for the landing here, but that'll do. Alright, so I'm going to get right on the middle here, and I'm going to lock it in with the SAS. Good to go. We've got about 12,000 meters to go, and we're... Mm, it's the Mun, so you're really not going to have much problems landing. Uh, basically going off of the meter thing. Just be very careful. Your lights, using the really long range lights, which are these uh, Illuminator Mark 1s here, will help you to gauge the distance to the surface better than using your shadow, because your shadow won't show up until later. So we're going about 130 meters a second here, getting fairly close. I'm actually going to slow it down a little bit. That is That is quick for my personal preferences here. We're going to start approaching the planet very soon. 50 meters a second. We're going to try to keep it somewhere around the 50 meter mark. 8,000 meters to go, and it looks like the Nido Kerman is going to land on the Mun without too much trouble. He doesn't have enough fuel to return, but that's okay. We can work on making bigger, more advanced ships that are capable of that in the future. Now, as you can see, our direction of travel has again decided to wander off the center mark. That's because we're traveling slower and closer to the surface. So I'm going to come over here a little bit. I'm going to burn a little bit more to, again, slow us down some and try to drag it back towards that center point because we want to be traveling as little sideways as possible. It's much easier to land something that's going straight up and down than it is something that's skidding to the side like a spider or a crab or something. All right, so there we go. We're nice and centered again. 4,000 meters to go. Get this thing right back on the center of the bubble here. As you can see, we're getting fairly close to the planet. There is one more thing that you can do to judge how far away you are from the planet, and that is to point your camera, tr camera towards the surface and back off a little bit. 
Now, we got to back off really far before we actually start hitting the surface of the planet here. So, it's not going to do us any good. But we're going to come out here. How we, ooh, wow. Okay, maximum burn here. Almost, almost did that too late. <laughs> here we go. All right, so we're getting really close to the surface of the moon here. Traveling 30 meters a second. You don't want to be traveling that fast when you hit. I'll tell you that much. All right, there is our shadow. We, ooh, slow it down. Now, I'm going to have to sit here and kind of finagle my landing because it's such a tiny little craft. All right, all right, come on. Now, what you want to remember to do here is when you actually come down to the surface, as soon as you touch down, hit the X key. That kills all of your throttle and makes it so that your craft doesn't try to float off the ground. It's very easy for you to tip over the spacecraft if you have your throttle engaged when you touch down because none of your weight is then attempting to get the craft to lay flat. It's just basically going to travel and it's going to hook on the ground on wherever that leg is touching and tip you over and you're going to go face first into the dirt. And that is the last thing you want to do. And there we have it. We have successfully landed on the Mun. We were able to accurately gauge the distance to the Mun using the shadow because it did actually show up about the same time the lights did. But you'll find that the lights show up much sooner if you're on the dark side. So that helps a lot in figuring out where to land. So we're going to tell Nito here. We're just going to have him go ahead and get out here. He's not afraid of just jumping off and letting go of this craft because he's on the mun. He's just like a boss jumping around. Did you see that? He must have fallen 20 feet and just didn't even feel it. We're going to activate the RCS pack here because here on the mun, you can actually fly with this thing because you're so, so very light. And of course, you can also skid down mountains on your face as many people are known to do a lot of on the moon, although generally at much higher velocities. I'm not confident in doing that myself, personally. All right, go ahead and get up there, buddy. Let's get back over to the craft. We're going to actually leave you in the craft. Uh, and for those of you wondering, the R key deploys your kit. Shift is up. The WASD keys move you forward, backwards, left, and right. And control is down, but we're not going to use control much here. It's nice that you can actually fly around with the jetpack on the MUN. Normally, it's just for maneuvers in space, but it's fun to do things like this on the MUN. So we can actually get him back up here and grab on. There you go. And go ahead and get back inside, and that'll recharge his jetpack. If we decide we want to do anything else with him in the future, I'm going to deactivate the lights here and leave him on the MUN. Thank you for joining me for this episode. That is how you land a planet. Specifically, this is how you land on the MUN. The other ones are much the same maneuvers. It's just harder to do. You need bigger craft, lots more things, and that usually involves building a space station in order to construct a craft large enough and with enough fuel on board in order to get out there. So that's what we're going to go over next time. Docking. Fun stuff.